The Fujicast is an independent loading zone production. I've always wondered what sort of people, Kev, keep their phones on in weddings. I mean, I've I've stood at the back, as you have, um, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of weddings and uh, and listened as the vicar or the priest, or um, your mileage may vary with different religions, no. has said... <laughs> Did you do that on purpose? No. <laughs> has said, please be sure to turn off your mobile phones. I always diligently look at mine, even though I know it's on silent. And then there's always some urchin, but five minutes into the the ceremony, uh, whose phone goes off and you think, oh, just for one moment, can't you? Really? Yeah. I mean, who would make that mistake, especially in a funeral? (laughs) Both me and you at the same time. (laughs) Well, I didn't know you were in a funeral. I I knew you were going to it, but I didn't know when (laughs) I called that you would be in it. Well, the vicar said, please make sure your phones are off. And I, I, I'd i already put mine on silent. I yeah. put it on do not disturb. I'd done all of that. And I sat there quite smugly thinking, ah, loads of old people at this funeral are going to get caught out by that. <laughs> and then, uh, then a couple of minutes later, my watch starts bleating at me. <laughs> Because it's connected to my watch. Was it audible? Could you clearly hear oh, it? Oh, yes. It was very, very audible. Was it? It was during the moment of silence. Oh, no. Yeah. And I glanced at my wrist, and, and whose smiling little name was pointing up at me? <laughs> <laughs> Your. <laughs> Neil calling. <laughs> but the thing is, I knew you were going to it, but I, I in my mind I thought, I think it's either finished now, and uh, you weren't at all. No. The Fuji cast. <laughs> I'm so what, sorry. You, I'm so sorry about that, Kev. Tough. What did you did you do? The walk of shame? Yeah, yeah. I couldn't. I, I went into a complete tailspin and couldn't figure out how to switch off. So I just run out the back doors. <laughs> clatter, clatter, clatter! Boom! <laughs> shut the door! Bang, bang! Grasping Boom. hold of your wrist. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Did you get a telling off? Did anybody say, "Oh, Mullins"? Yeah. The um, no, not afterwards. But the, uh, the, the 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 funeral director guy was very very terse with me turn that off was he so, yeah. well, that's, he should, so he should be yeah. said it weren't me it was Neil <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh I wondered who called me later on with a complaint <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry Kev I I um, I, uh, I heartily apologise but at the same time I'm thinking surely he knows how to silence all his gimmicks in his life <laughs> it was, oh, I thought I did I, yeah. I just never really I, I like, yeah. I just didn't know. I like, expect the, the watch to still be connected. Did the funeral go okay after that, though? Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a death at the end of it. I'm oh, Kev. <laughs> Heaven's <laughs> sakes! Right. That's my third, that's my second funeral in seven days. You, I said you, to my mum and dad, I said, "Look, <laughs> I've worn this black tie for the twice in a week now. I don't want to have to get out again until it's one of your turns." <laughs> oh no, Kev. Aren't you doing a third in the in the company? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, but the, uh, yeah, there's another one in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Fly me. It's like you've got a. It's like you've got a season ticket there, Kev. Right. Yeah, no, no. That age, we're at that age, aren't we? Mm, no, don't don't say that. Don't say that. Welcome to no. the show. Um, yeah. fun- Hello. Fun- Hello. Funeral cast. <laughs> oh, oh today, you and your questions. Uh, let's get back uh, back in the room. Three, two, one. Back in the room. You and your questions that you sent in for us to answer about. Um, photography and and, uh, your love for Fuji film cameras. But as we haven't said for a long time, actually, you don't have to just shoot Fuji as a flavour. Um, it, it, uh, other other flavours are available, although Kev does come up in hives if you mention the word Sony. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, also from the Facebook uh, group questions that you've been sending in from from there as well. Our guest is, so as part two of Christina Vradiksina, um I'll be talking to her. She's um, one of the, the new, well, newish now, I suppose, uh, ambassadors, ex-photographers in the UK. Um, so Christina is on. And uh, we've got Mr. Whisper in the coming weeks as well. Mr. Do you, Whisper. Do you know what Mr. Whisper's real name is? I haven't got a clue. Because I might well have been doing my cursory man looking, which I am often accused of and everybody is right about. But I couldn't find his name easily when I looked at his website. So I wrote, uh, Dear Mr. Whisper, (laughs) which felt a bit odd. And then he wrote back with his real name. And I thought, I'm not sure I'm allowed to call you that. It's a bit like if you knew Santa Claus' real name, which is actually Fred. You couldn't write Dear Fred. You have to write Dear Santa, don't you? It's this... uh... It's come, the start of this show has gone off in very, very weird directions, hasn't oh, it? that's all right, I think. 
<laughs> it's all right. Well, we started with funerals. We've gone to Mr. Whisper and then Santa. Right. Um, have we got anybody to thank before we before we start, Kev? Pick time as usual. Uh, Pick-time.com, who are the site that both myself and Kev use when it comes to our, our galleries to show our clients the work afterwards. And, of course, they can buy from it. Kev, you do so much with it because you sell albums through it as well. You have it automated in a far more progressive way than I do. That's, that's for sure. What are the things that you'd... Because I, I use mine simply to sell prints, really. Um, I'm happy with that. But what is it that you do that uh, extends that? Because there's so much more you can do with with the gallery. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it primarily acts as an online archive, doesn't it? So I, I went through the steps of getting all of my old weddings online, um, transferred them from the old provider that I used. And so literally every single wedding from... 2008 or whatever it is 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 on there now so you've done the whole uh, lot the whole lot and they offer a service where for a dollar a gallery they will transfer your old galleries from other systems such as uh well zen photo definitely but um pixie set various you know various other you know different kind of sites to a similar thing so i did it i paid my dollar a gallery i did it over a period of about six months and and they just do it they just they just log in and transfer it all across so for me it's a peace of mind thing as well that i know that not only do i have my own kind of backup system but i also have everything is available on pick time in the cloud as a as a forever archive kind of thing no i didn't i I, I didn't do that kevin i'm beginning to think i I, well wish i had i I could retrospectively do it yeah i know yeah um Perhaps it's a, a good idea. So you keep it as an archive. Um, you sell your prints through it, as I do. You do downloads, as I do. But also you you extend further and go for albums, don't you? Yeah, there's albums. I offer, uh, my albums are done through PickTime. Um, I also sell fine art prints on uh, f16.click mm-hmm. via the gallery um, interaction. So, yeah, I use, I use basically all of it and the slideshow creation, yeah. everything. And, uh, and you can too. If you wish, and what's, you can get a free month using Fujicast as the code, yeah. capital or all, capitals. All in caps, yeah. So go to mm. pick-time.com um, when it comes to check out Fujicast. Big, bold, Fujicast shouty letters. Is your friend. Yes. yes. No, no, don't write Fujicast as your friend. Just write Fujicast. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah just write Fujicast. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll go for questions. Before we go for questions, Kev, I got a slap on the wrist from Neil Ford, our friend Neil Ford who said, uh, what did he say? Let me go back through the messages. Um, Oh, yeah. By the way, with regards to the X-H2S, it does have a focus mode button, just not a focus mode switch. It, well, you're right. It does. You can. It's not got the switch. It's the switch I was talking about. I thought that was obvious, Kev. Yeah, no, it was absolutely obvious. And yes, Neil is is technically right, but it's nowhere near as ergonomically friendly. Mm. So yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, and and the reason being that they can, you can then align that button to anything else, any other function button you so yeah. wish. It's a toggle it, switch that is missing. It was a deal breaker for me. Was it actually really, really, really hand on heart that button alone? No, that, that was, but that was the major, major thing. Yeah, that was the the major thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just didn't. I, I, you know, I'm not a pazamama. I don't like it. <laughs> oh, Never what? will be a pazamama. I like my I like my tactile controls. I like yeah. to be able to touch everything, twiddle everything, and get the results. <laughs> The results that I need from twiddling things. <laughs> That's why you get in so much trouble, Kev. Yeah, I think so. Right, let's go for questions. Do you want to start with uh, with Facebook? Uh, yeah, okay. So, latest one, as usual, from David Lawson, was posted just two hours ago yeah. uh, at time of recording. Yeah. Question about film simulations and RGB tone curve. Oh, this was for you, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Well, you know, one day I'm going to come back with something so technical it's going to blow your mind. Uh, I haven't actually read the question yet anyway, but it says, uh, it goes on to say, I've seen a few JPEG processing workflows that put a tone curve in the RGB channels. Uh, (laughs) uh, Does does this impact the underlying authenticity of the film simulation? Secondly, how do the results of the tone curve in the RGB channel differ from just a normal tone curve? Thank you both. Yeah, Well, don't say both. It's clearly thank you, Kev, on this one. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, I think I can answer part of the question at least. So, yeah, I mean, if you think of a film simulation as uh, native in the box, so let's just say, uh, I don't know, Classic Neg. Yeah. Classic Neg really, as it is defined by Fujifilm, is with everything else on zero, no other tweaks, no other, you know, settings changed or anything like that. 
to take your picture, throw it off the, the camera onto the computer. That is a, a, a photograph in classic neg as Fujifilm kind of dictated it. Right. The moment you start changing it in any way, shape or form by adding clarity or adding, uh, in this case, the RGB tone curves, maybe adding a bit of shadows, highlights, all of that kind of stuff. Yep. It's still classic neck, but it's just as if, almost as if you were having a dark room process put on it. You know, afterwards, if you were shooting a film, and then you you take it to the dark room, and you you know you kind of bring bring in the shadows a bit more and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I mean, in terms of the integrity of the original film simulation, yeah, it will change it. It does it does change it. Um, I'm not sure whether using the word authenticity is is a bit too strong though, um, because it is still the the same film simulation. You've just applied some kind of uh, you know adjustments to it. Um, now, one of the things that I do with um, some of my color film simulations is, I, for example, um, Classic Neg or Classic Chrome, I actually then desaturate them in Lightroom because I like the punchy feel of the color, but then I turn them into black and white. So in that case, I'm totally taking away the integrity of the film simulation because it's no longer even in color. I'm just using the, the, the tonal elements of that film simulation. Now, to answer the, thir- the second part of the question, how do the results of a tone curve in the RGB channel differ from just a normal tone curve thank you both so uh the rgb tone tone curve um is red green blue channels so you can adjust individual color channels you can push up the um the density if you like of the reds the greens the blues um whereas the standard tone curve is just overall uh, effectively darkness and lightness of the image itself so i typically go for a, a subtle s curve um, and that pushes, that gives me a punchy black and white or punchier color. And then you can so wish go and uh, edit in more detail using the RGB channels, which some people do with um, presets and various things like that. Um, so yeah, there is a there is a subtle um, change, and you would really only notice it if you started, you know, you started digging into the tone curves and started moving around those RGB channels. Uh, it's a good way of, uh, you know, if you're shooting, I don't know, football or something, you want the the the, the pitch to be greener, then you can you can go in and, and just adjust that kind of color level if you wish. That's exactly what I would do, Kev. I would engage my dynamic architectures. There we go. Yeah. yeah. I thought you would say exactly the same thing. I just yeah. summarised it for you. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, it's important. You've got, you've got to be an envisioneer of vertical web readiness, haven't you? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> a vertical web readiness? No, just facilitate your proactive e-tailer. That's what I say. Oh, God. Have you been reading books again? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but I have been streamlining my efficient action items. Oh, no. God. <laughs> There's a website called makebullshit.com. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Very good. Very good. And I just yeah. thought, uh, this this is the sort of thing you need to take into the uh, into the boardroom. This is the way uh, we've got a very good friend called Paul, um, and he's a very corporate man, and he speaks in sentences I just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stuff he comes out with. But, Paul, would you monetize your efficient architectures for a brand mission critical supply chain? And he'd say, well, he'd come back with an answer, probably. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, right. That's I think we'll have uh, to leave the room. <laughs> well, I was, <laughs> there we go. But you can imagine that, Kev, if people talk in that sort of way. How would you deal with it, Kev? Uh, I used to, when I used to work in the banks, and I worked at Deutsche Bank specifically, I, I, I used to sit in these meetings and... and my, I, practically need to use pencils or, or matchsticks to keep mm. my eyes open. It was just guff, like proper guff. I knew exactly what they were saying, but they were all trying to out big willy each other with big words. Yeah. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, me dear. Let oh, some air people. in the room, for heaven's sakes. Somebody strike a light. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, right, you'll go. One yeah. from Janice K. Hi, guys. You said you were looking for more questions, so I've got two. One, what's your blueprint for a photographer who has some skills wanting to start a photography business? What are three things to focus on from a business perspective to get your first clients? If it helps, here's my photography website um, for your information on the kind of photography I enjoy doing. So if you want to look this up, Kev, as, um, as we're looking through the site, you can. It's um, we'll, we'll link to it on the the show page, of course. It's all the W's. Uh, Janice Co. J A N I C E Co. K H O. dot com. Letter K. Letter K. H O. dot com. So if you uh, want to follow that to to the website, there. Yeah, very nice. Nice pictures, though. Most importantly, I suppose one of the first things to do is to identify what it is you want to do, 
because even though I have um, of late um, extended my my portfolio of things I wish to shoot and do, and I did for a moment f- flirt with the idea of putting everything on one website. I know I did because we talked about it here, and then reality did strike, and I I decided to keep my commercial work separate from the wedding and social photography work. But if you identify what what it is you are going to shoot, it'll be far easier than going to look for your ideal clients, won't it, Kev? So, so Janice, yeah. for example, on this website, and this looks quite co- – at first sight, this looks very commercial because we've got some cracking interiors, coffee, we've got people at work, um, we've got some well, some beautiful uh, beautiful landscape work, some – there's some astrophotography on there. Look, there's the northern lights. Then there's that. That's a Mediterranean. Um, uh, that's Mediterranean architecture by the looks of it. To the right of, of that particular picture. Then, then we. That could be the Burlington Arcade. I don't know the bottom left hand one. Then there's some street photography. So there's a lot going on here, Kev, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's fine. Also, I mean, I, you know, if you. Yes, I mean you're right, Neil. In that, I think if you if you Janice are trying to find you know three things that will will bring you in business, then Neil's spot on. One of those things is your you know your website probably needs to concentrate at least a little bit more on one direction. Uh, not the band, by the way, um, but you know make make. Uh, <laughs> that's, it's really early for me. I've I've only been up about twenty five minutes. What? So. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to ring you. Um, I'm going to ring you all sorts of inopportune moments from now on. Now I know I can do it. Um, but but that doesn't mean this is not a, a beautiful site. I like no, I like no, the no, you know no, it's very no. clean and everything. Yeah, and one yeah. thing I always say to people though when I'm looking at their websites is you know we're trying to sell photographs. Don't be scared about using big pictures. Yeah. You know we everything here is thumbnail and you have to go that extra step to click on something and see it bigger and then you've got. A, get click back again etc so don't you know don't be afraid of uh of, of showing your pictures off nice and big but but that said business wise uh they're, they're all really strong pictures and stuff so you know concentrate if for example so on your on the left hand side of your website right now you have um several areas documentary photography branding and personal branding architecture and interiors uh i.e house project i'm not sure what that is um urban nature and travel so uh, and then uh uh, work with me, architecture and interior, business, personal branding, etc. So, if, for example, you are more keen on doing, arch- you want seventy percent of your business to be architecture and interiors. Let's just say, then I would make sure that seventy percent, at least, of the homepage is architecture and interiors. Obvious. Um, that's the way I would would kind of do it. Right. Um, but it may be that you're very happy to to photograph anything that comes along, um, which would be lovely, wouldn't it? So yeah, I mean that that's that's number one uh, for sure. And then three a blueprint. I don't know if there is such a thing as a blueprint, three step mm. blueprint to get your first client. It's, it's changed a lot from when we started, Kev. I remember um, in particular for my my business uh, photography, one of the things I did was local networking, which still exists. You can still go to the, there are, I'm sure there's still the BNI's business network things. And I, I joined one called Newbury Business Group and they do breakfasts. And why don't they do it at like a normal time? Why are all these people, <laughs> they're up at, like, what they do is they get up at four in the morning. No, no, and they go Kev, for they a don't. Run. No, you go they for a nice run. They come home, they have a cold shower. Then they go to their breakfast business meeting at yeah. four in the, in the morning. Then they go off to work and they, they talk aggressively at each other. And then they come home again. I'm well, not sure. Not sure 11, that's the way it works. I used to gently get up at six, Kev. Uh, pop down to there was a golf club where, which they hired the breakfast room for. Oh, they're always at golf clubs. I as know, well. but they're, well, they're quite good for for local stuff. They're cheaper, I think, than the hotels. And then uh, and then by seven o'clock, we were sat down, we'd have a little bit of a uh, bit of chow down, and then at about twenty past seven, we'd all make one minute presentations. Now, the only thing about business groups is there's a slight pressure on delivering business to each other, and I found. This is a personal thing. I found the BNI one. For me, I thought some of the leads I were getting, I was getting, were, were, were not necessarily that strong, because there was this pressure to always say, "Well, I've got you a lead," and then you you'd, you get the little ticket across, and it it wouldn't really relate to business at all, or, or certainly produce any business. However, having said that, between that and the other group, that kickstart that can completely kick-started my local commercial business, which then enabled me to get some more national work. I then came away from business and, and, and worked more on weddings. However, 
uh, during that time, I got a wedding in South Africa, which I did from from the group and and various other ones as well. And it and it was good for my social photography business. Yeah, I, I think in general, you know, certainly for commercial photography, the the, the you know the the only kind of the main thing that still works, however you dress it up, is you've got to get out there and and effectively bang on doors. I would say, yeah, um, yeah. you know, getting, you know, get in touch with, um, you know, local real estate companies, you know, do you need any kind of uh, real estate photography interiors that can lead to some other stuff, yeah, you know, yeah. um, y- y- it's not, it's not good enough to just build a website and sit back and hope the phone rings. Yeah. Uh, you know, it just doesn't work like that anymore. I mean, we, I, you know, I, I'm think I work primarily in the social documentary work marketplace, so it's slightly different. But you know, commercial stuff, or the commercial work, all the commercial work I've got uh, that I've kind of ever had really has come by uh, people that I've known or people that I've uh, you know I've, I've shot weddings for before or something. Or in one case, uh, yeah. another photographer handed me a whole load of work because they were quitting. You know, it, it's 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 not just as easy as you know saying I'm a commercial photographer and then no, just hoping no. the stuff comes in. You know, the, the, but the most important thing, I think, the, the, by far the most important thing is to get the business practice in place, get your systems in place, get your finances in place, make sure you've got separation of business and personal banking, uh, tax, insurance, all of that kind of stuff. Don't don't just put that stuff off and think, oh, I'll do that when everything gets a bit bigger, because, you know, you'll, it, it will get left behind. And then at some point, something will bite you on your derriere. The third, the third part of it, I mean, we've probably mentioned five, six, seven more there, what, what with your additions. But uh, if there was a third, third overarching thing here, it would be marketing, wouldn't it? Um, which includes social media. How do you, how do you get? Uh, you are my social media guru, Kev. What is the first social media thing you would put into practice? Uh, Instagram. You know, yeah. I had a couple of uh, quite choice emails. <laughs> I, I wonder whether you might. When I mean, you said choice, people saying you're talking nonsense. It's all right for you. You've got a gazillion followers. Exactly yeah. that again. Yeah, we don't, we don't need to go into it again. But I did also on the flip side have a couple of um, uh, direct messages from people saying, "Yeah, I totally agree with you, Kev. I get most of my business from Instagram." Anyway, yes, Instagram is is uh, is probably for photography still is, is the thing. Yeah. Um, you know, and 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 and, and have a have a uh, have a good. Uh, strategy when it comes to social media, but always remember it's social. Remember, in back in the day, we used to have mugs printed with this, didn't we? Yeah. Remember, remember, remember the, the social, social in social, social media. media. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. uh, you know, and it's free, isn't it? You know, it's free marketing. It's, you know, in the early days. Well, you know, unless we you decide to to spend some money on uh, on um, what do they call it in Instagram? Not promoting, um, uh, boosting, boosting your posts and stuff. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, you can do all of that kind of stuff, of course, or you can pay for Google AdWords and yeah. various things like that. But but the days of paying in uh, sticking your stuff in the yellow pages and oh god. You know they're what they're long gone. I mean, yellow pages don't exist anymore. I was going to say that I don't think they exist, do they? No. No, they do online, but not that you don't get the. I used to like it because it, I could stack them and, and reach the tins of soup on the top shelf without <laughs> any <in> fast Gemma. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I think if we had the yellow pages now or a great big telephone directory, remember those uh, in the house. I'm sure our two boys would weaponize them and hit each other with them. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm sure they <laughs> would. Yeah. They were huge, weren't they? Massive things. And there used to be people who could, you know, they'd have yellow pages tearing competitions, wouldn't you? So who can tear a yellow page? Oh, God, I forgot about that. Yes. There were people, it's like a martial art. Yeah. yeah. Black belt in ripping yellow pages apart. <laughs> God. There's a second uh, question. Janice said she sent uh, two in. So, do you think creatives like photographers and videographers struggle with implementing good systems for business process, managing clients, and so on? Do you use any digital tools to help you with it? So uh, CRM systems and so on and so forth. I'm not sure. uh, I know I... I'm a bit more manual, but one of the reasons for I think if I, I if I ran a studio that that was that had throughput of ten, eleven, twelve clients a week coming for photo shoots and all that sort of stuff, I think a CRM would would probably be more useful to me. But I work with small amounts of clients, Kev. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I I've looked at a lot of the CRMs over the years, and and they're all very good. Um, some of them are far more intricate and complicated than others. You know, you can integrate your banking and you all can, kinds of yeah. stuff with them. Yeah. Some of them are a little bit more simpler, but none of them really did exactly what I wanted them to do. 
um you know i just felt like i was filling in data for the sake of the app rather than for for my business so but on the, on the flip side of that i do think it's really really important to have a um a, a business you know a system in place and i in the end well, i mean I'd say in the end i did the right at the beginning but i've built my own one which is a custom one that i use mm-hmm. which works perfectly for me um custom out of know. what access or excel or yeah it's a microsoft access right. um system that i've kind of developed over time and and that's fine you know it works works perfectly well for me and you know it, it's it's my, my grades didn't change it bits and pieces over the years but it but it's p- perfectly tailored to me so for example i can go into that and i can pull off any inquiry that i've ever had you yeah. know whether i actually shot the, the, the job or not yeah. um i can look at stats i can look at analysis i can look at i can i can run a report that says right show me show me when the most in, um, busy inquiry periods are you know across a series of years period of time um, you know, show me the average um, time between inquiry and actual confirmation of booking yep. over a period of time, so I can get trends and stats and everything from it. Yeah. But you know, very easy. But I, you know, that's that's me. And but but I find those that information is really important to me and the way I run my business. So yes, absolutely. Don't you know? Don't just rely on uh, you know pen and paper. Certainly, don't rely on a. Uh, what they call it, a wall chart with yeah. sticky labels and yeah. wedding or, you know, job, or whatever, because sticky labels can fall off and, you know, <laughs> or make sure you have it, have it robust system yeah. in place, especially if you want to be, you know, doing, having a busy job, busy yeah. business going forward. Is that access is, a, I, I, I remember years and years and years ago, pro- probably two decades, maybe more, I don't know, um, mm. h- hiring somebody to make us uh, an access uh, database for the um, the radio company and the training company I was in, and I think he charged something like five thousand quid. <laughs> mm. It was uh, it was it was certainly something that was very very specialist, and he was very good. Um, granted, um, do you need do you need to uh, look at access or or, or no. will a will an Excel do? Excel well, access essentially is just data, you know, with a graphical user interface on the front of it. But yes, I mean, Excel would do if you are you, you know if you understand Excel and you understand. Uh, you know how to how to analyze data in it, um, mm. but alternatively, you know, you might just use Excel and just every you know have one tab that says jobs, one tab that says inquiries, yeah. one tab that says telephone numbers, you know, whatever. But uh, you know, once that's combined with an, an email system that works, so again, all my clients have their own folder in my email system, you know, and there's there's kind of levels of of um, uh, of movement in that so before but uh, before book inquiry before booking yeah. uh booking kind of thing so you know it's very easy to extrapolate all of that information yeah. but yeah have something in place no you don't need access and i wouldn't encourage anybody to use access now it's it's it, you know microsoft don't really um develop it or support it oh do they not more. support i wondered whether they support do you utilize your visual metrics on it <laughs> visual metrics uh, no. uh, and do you embrace uh, the revolutionary uh, content that comes within the drop downs <laughs> <laughs> or utilize your seamless web readiness because that's they're not, very called, important. they're not called drop downs they're called control boxes oh are they okay oh so you integrate the innovative solution within that do you i do yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, 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 I do, yeah. this is really i'm going to be able to talk to paul uh, just like i'm one of the one of the one of the team from now on i'm going i'll have to carry this website around with me <laughs> yeah yeah you're you're, you're, you're going to lose friends very quickly <laughs> No, no, with Paul, he's going to embrace me. He'll think, uh, now, uh, yeah. years later, now you understand me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, right, let's have uh, the second part of uh, of our, our guest, Christina Varicina, who is one of the uh, one of the new, well, newish, as I said before, ex photographers, Fujifilm uh, UK, that is. Now, last week we talked about Christina's introduction to photography. And this week, I'm keen to know uh, about her introduction to Fujifilm. Yes, as part of the Ambassador lineup. In part one, we talked about her personal and very emotionally revealing self-portrait series, but equally her portraits of others, the unconventional models, in inverted commas, those who don't fit neatly into the description made by the big model agencies, whose looks, whose persona uh, steps outside that box of conventional beauty as uh, Christina referred to it and one such wonderful portrait and study and story Christina made was of a Norwegian lady called Mary who said to me the essence of beauty is in one's politeness empathy and generosity with other people that for Mary is what makes a truly beautiful person so I was keen to know more from Christina about her time 
uh, with Mary making portraits. Yeah, uh, I, I met her through uh, family, actually. I was on vacation in Norway and uh, there was someone's birthday and she was one of the guests there. And then I learned that she was about to turn 90 years old yes, and I was yes. just amazed by it, how good she just looked really good and the, that sparkle in her eyes, yeah. it was so young, so like full of energy. And I thought, oh, I would love to photograph her. And unfortunately, she didn't speak much English. So we couldn't have like a really lengthy conversation before or during the shoot. But I had some family helping me out to translate. But then, yes, but then I asked her if she would like to write that, you know, her understanding of beauty. And she came up with this really beautiful quote for me. And I thought, yeah, I think with age, you really start valuing these these other things that she mentions and rather than the perfect appearance and Instagram likes. Yeah. yeah. Did you interview, uh, essentially, did you interview each person as you were yeah. photographing them so you'd get the narrative story? Yeah, that was, that was yeah. kind of the big part of the project as well, so that people or the viewer can see not just what they do in camera, what, you know, how they interact with me as a photographer, but also what they really think. It was interesting to see Vogue picked up the baton and ran with it, didn't they? Which which clearly is good news. Definitely. Yeah. How, yeah. Did, how did that yeah. come about? Uh, you can actually submit with uh, to, to Photo Vogue. Yeah. You can submit images and they feature them daily or weekly. I mean, obviously, there are thousands of pictures that they have to go through. And if yours get picked up, you're very lucky. Um, you mentor now as well, don't you? So... Um, in, t in terms of uh, suggesting, teaching, mentoring newer photographers, what, what do you say to them who are trying to carve out their own place in this business? What's your message to them? The main message would probably be to be honest with yourself, to understand who you are and what you really would like to do, not what you think is going to sell more or um, you think you're better at than everyone else. I think it's more about the kind of person you are. You know, what makes you, 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 your personal experience, your childhood growing up, and, you know, all the things that you're into, what makes you, you. And then out of that, you find the type of photography you want to do. Because a lot of times at school or at university, you're told, you know, you're kind of given the path. You go this way, you'll be successful or you'll, you know, yeah. everyone's path is different. So you need to find what works what works for you and the honest part because if you're gonna do what you really don't love or don't feel passionate about like a lot of people think i'm drawn to beauty so i'm going to do fashion photography or something that really looks beautiful because there's a whole team there's production it makes it all together as a really beautiful image because i'm drawn to beauty but if you don't really love fashion if you don't live and breathe fashion don't, don't do it. Well, congratulations, by the way, for, for um, you've joined the ex-photographer team. How did that come about? I got a Fujifilm camera uh, 2017. Right. I loved it. I just fell in love with it almost right away. I do a lot of post-production, but not in the sense that I, you know, composite different elements and flying cars and backgrounds, but I, I do more nuanced, like color work, tonal corrections work. And then I saw the files from that camera, how flexible they, the curves uh, were. And I thought, oh, I can get so much information, so, like, so much nuanced detail work on those files. And yeah, I just fell in love with the results, what I could achieve with it. And I started just sharing everywhere that I'm using Fuji camera. At the time, I actually was working with, a little bit with Capture One and they interviewed me for their own blog and things like that. And so I did some, a couple projects for Fuji, kind of collaborated on a few shoots. I, uh, I was a photographer for the launch of the medium format. I think it was an 80 millimeter lens, medium format. And then after a couple of years, they just uh, invited me to be an ex-photographer. I'm glad, I'm glad you told us the whole story there because um, we've talked about this so often on the program that, that people feel that being an ambassador is, is a, is a short-term thing. It's not. It's building a relationship. And it's actually an authentic relationship with the, the, the camera as well, isn't it? What was that first camera, by the way, that you had? 
The very, very first one. Yeah, the very first one that, that, that helped you fall in love with Fujifilm. Uh, that one was 50S, GFX 50S. Oh, it was a GFX, because you use a yeah. GFX now, don't you? So Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Do you use any of the other X? Uh, well, series? now I'm using the 100S one. Okay. Uh, do you use a T5 or an X-H2, anything like that as well? Or is I it... use X-T4 X-T4. Well. Your photographs have a, a very painterly feel. They're, they're very, um, am I correct in saying they're, they're kind of like they have a pastel canvas in, in many ways? To me, at any rate, is, 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 is it important to, to find a style and stay within the style? I don't think it's maybe important to stay within the style. I think it's, it's, it's maybe important to, to stay true to yourself. I'm going to repeat myself again, because I think as you, you know, you live your life, there are things happening in your life and you may change as a person. So I think it will be just constricting yourself too much if you just keep replicating the style that you once found i think it's better to to just be honest and uh, just feel what you really like right now who you are right now you know at the moment if you feel like you have you have found something i think it's important to be able to um to have consistency between your images and especially within one project any new projects coming up um, so there's one project that I'm hoping to uh, introduce to everyone this year. Uh, I photographed it last year and I hope to continue wor- working on it. So it's also work in progress. But I went to um, Uzbekistan, oh, um, wow. and the, par- the part of it, which is called Karakol Pakistan, which is a republic within the republic. And they have this... Um, climate problem uh, with the RLC that has dried out almost completely over the past 50 more so years. And the whole sea is almost completely gone. And so they have now a desert instead of it. So there's a whole climate, big climate problem. And so uh, it's intertwined with the with the life uh, circumstances and political situation in the country as well. So I went there in September and I photographed uh, some people, some communities and landscapes as well to document that. Yeah, so I'm preparing this project to launch mm. this year and hopefully continue. Continue. I, I want to come back and photograph more. That's such a massive project. Um, yeah, it that, is. That I, I suppose really you do need to distill it to start with and think, well, portraits uh, and some landscapes and then i'll return to do whatever whatever comes next it could become a project like that mm-hmm. but um so far i'm interested in personal stories right. of people i met a few families and individuals photographed them on location and around their houses uh, i stayed with some families in their houses and they're super welcoming they're mm-hmm. so happy to see you and to welcome you in their home and for you to stay with them that i felt it was really easy to to bond with them in that way that you know i'm i'm a guest in their house and i'm very sort of respectful to all their tradition and i'm very curious and i think they they enjoyed it as well when kevin interviews his guests he has a question he always asks at the end i'm not going to ask his one um, but but I found myself in 2023 asking my own question, too, at the end of, uh, of, of interviews. It's a three-letter word that makes the question. And if you need a second to think about it, feel free. <laughs> uh, the yeah. question is, what is your why? Now, that might be a personal thing. It could be a photographic thing. I just think I have so many whys, but I think all of them or many of them come to the question of inequality mm-hmm. why is the world so unequal on so many levels uh, why some of the wo- well, so some of the voices are not heard why do we have to pretend that we are who we are not and why can't we why can't just be, we be ourselves and just express what we are honestly you know on the inside and, uh, and also, I think within the past maybe a decade, uh, with the growth of social media, it's, it's so uh, important to have that persona of yourself. And, and you're not allowed to be who you are, and you're not allowed to, be, uh, to express what you really think or what you really feel. And I think it also comes from inequality, because if we, ha- if we had equal opportunities, maybe we wouldn't have to lie and pretend so much. 
And our, our thanks to Christina Varick Sinner for um, for her time with us. And of course, we will link to Christina's work on the the show page, famous show page today. Um, I meant to say, by the way, Janice, um, who had the question before we heard from Christina, si- signed off, Kev, with the word awesome. Are we allowing the word awesome? Warning, warning. Awesome is good, yeah. Is it? Okay. Always find it entertaining and educational. Well, you find Kev educational, I'm sure. <laughs> Probably not me. Right, your question, Kev. Okay, so this is quite apt. I hadn't read this either, so uh, it's quite a long one, but uh, very, very apt, and it does kind of uh, swing us back into the Instagram conversation. Oh, Michael Nowak says, "Hi Neil, hi Kev, thanks for the show. I'm a long time listener. Yada yada yada. I haven't had that for a while, have we? No. Um, it's not a question, just an observation about Kev's Instagram success. <laughs> Is success in inverted commas there? No, 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 okay. no, no. All right. So before I read this out, by the way, if, for those of you who haven't listened to last week's show or the week, week, week before, before show, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we had a, a something about Instagram and I was saying that, you know, it, it works very well for me and it's a great platform if you if you use it right. So uh, Michael goes on to say, I heard him speaking on the uh, London meetup that he sees no ads on Instagram and has all kinds of success with it. Mm. I'm sick and tired of hearing Instagram is fine when it's clearly not. (laughs) Can we just agree that Kevin has a special account under special rules that has randomly (laughs) been assigned to a different set of rules? Uh, And then he says, I'm not joking. uh, Facebook is famous for dividing their user base into all sorts of cohorts and running experiments and different features to them my guess is that kevin's account has gotten misplaced forgotten after one of these experiments and we can't draw (laughs) any conclusions from it you may try an experiment kevin open up a new instagram account and try to drive any sales that way i dare you oh i think that's yes yeah you Uh, is there more is there more (laughs) no 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 that's it so uh so michael right so um i did set up a new instagram account and i set it up uh approximately i'm just looking when the very first post was uh 22 weeks ago right okay and it's called mullins underscore monochrome yeah. and uh it currently has 697 followers yeah. and uh it uh it has driven not a lot of business but it has driven um portrait business to me because i've been putting some portraits up there um so the, yeah so there you go i have set up a separate account it's got um 697 followers yeah. which i think is reasonable for something that's uh, been around for 22 weeks and has got i don't know 25 posts but you will it. have had a you you wouldn't have had a standing start kev um you will have had a running start though because of being able to no, promote don't you it. even think well, don't, no, well, I'm going to because well, there will be don't. people saying saying exactly this. You are Mullins. You are Mullins of the Kevin of I don't Malmesbury. Give a <laughs> about whether I'm Mullins or not. We were all born naked. Yeah, yeah but I knew you do not, this. No, 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 I know you. I know you did. Everybody else can do that. You cannot just set up an Instagram account (laughs) and then say it's not working. Uh, It's all right for Mullins because he's Mullins. That's just that. that, I find it disingenuous and rude when people say that to me because it makes me feel like they're just saying, "Yeah, you're you're nothing. You all you've no, not at all. No, all your work. No, you get all your work because of what's come your way. No, and I say to them, it's come my way because I put effort into getting that stuff. Yes, that's exactly right. It's come your way because you've put the work and you've put the uh, the miles in. Uh, which does help later on along the line when you have new accounts like Mullins underscore monochrome. Well, because Michael, whether you like Mike, it or not, you don't start from a standing start, Kev. Michael said, <laughs> try, an, uh, try an experiment, Kevin. Open yeah. up a new Instagram account and try to drive any sales that way. I dare you. Which you did. Um, which you did. Which I did, and it worked. Yeah. So there you go. Set one up next, now. Next person, next person who says it's all right for you because you have... <laughs> Fuji film support. You've been around for a long time. Your name is Mullins. You're this, you're yeah. that, whatever. Literally, I will poke them in the eye and then I will kick them in the g-s. So can I ask you a question? Did you promote Mullins underscore monochrome on F16.click? I don't think I have. I've only put one post on F16.click in about nine months. All oh, right. Okay. So, no. How did you prom- how work. did you promote it then? Did you just stick it up there and wait for wait for the people to come? I put so I when the first when I put my first post on there, I then put, went onto my Facebook account. Yeah. And I said, I've got a new account. Uh, Mullins and Scrum Monocom. Oh, it's going right, to be okay. personal yeah. stuff. No, but 
So it did. It did reach conservatively a few people that might say, "Oh, I like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna join that." I am. It's not like it was entirely launched from a bunker in the dark to nobody, Kevin. I don't, I don't think anybody reasonable begrudges you this. You, you did what every marketeer does. You looked at something that could be a good loud hailer, surely. But that, what's what's that got to do with anything? That's what everybody should do. Yeah, I know, that's but no, I know, I know, but, but that 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 is a, that, that's my way of saying that you have a reasonably good, if you want to call it a running style, a walking style, whatever you want to call it, you have a reasonably good way because you work bloody hard at it, Kev, to to give yourself an advantage when you do start um, a. a, a anything new much like anybody in the media who's got a following who then says right i've i've been doing this i now want to go and make ice creams you know people say well i'll come and watch you make ice creams because uh, i actually really liked um, the other stuff you did you might be quite good at making ice cream so i'll follow you along to that just see what you like if i was in the studio now neil i would poke you in the eyes and kick you in the goodies <laughs> under the table uh, i really would and it, it does it does annoy me i i I, I do think this is a Lady Doth protest moment, Kev. It's simply a recognition of hard work, which means when you do something, and when I say you, it's not just a Mullins thing. Other people exist too. That They've earned the opportunity to enjoy the fruits of their labours, afforded by the publicity of the noise they and you have worked hard to create. That's all it is. I, I find it quite, like... Rude. I don't know why it annoys you because I'd ce- I'd celebrate the fact that I'd work really hard to give myself yes. opportunities in the future. I'd Correct. see that as a absolutely a celebrate it rather than than use it as an excuse to not work hard themselves. You know, it's oh, it's all right for Kevin. You know, he's got this, he's done that, he's done this, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um. So it, it, you, you know, yes, that's very true. And there's you know, I've had some. I've been kicked in the goodies myself several times. You know, notwithstanding the to being the dropped Tudor. as a, a film <laughs> ambassador that oh, yeah, you know yeah, that yeah. that was a huge kick in the goodies yeah. but i'm still going i'm still yeah. you know i'm still running my business i'm still putting the effort in i'm still getting up in the morning i don't sit there watching netflix or anything like that during the day well i do sometimes depends <laughs> but you know i, I you know it's it it, 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 it re- whether I, I might be wrong by being annoyed at those kind of statements but they do annoy me you know, I know they, they annoy do. you, but but um, I always I I do feel that um, that when you've worked really hard and you've built trust, which you have, and you've built networks, which you have, um, then it is going to give you an opportunity. Um, let's just call it an opportunity. No, I totally disagree because we're not freaking <laughs> rock stars. We're not. We are no, photographers. I'm, yeah, I'm not talking we're, about we're that. We're photographers. So the people who go, who saw my Mullins monochrome post and and, and sent me an email for um, to see if I could for, uh, do a, a portrait shoot of them. Yeah. They have no idea. They have no idea about, you know, me doing talks or anything like that. They just go, oh, I really like that black and white picture. I might yeah. drop him a message. That's all it is. It's nothing, you know. Yes, the following count might be mostly other photographers. So that means nothing, does it? I don't get any business from them, you know. Yeah. So and I don't care. It's 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 you know it's it's wrong to to just say, you know, he's got a uh, you know a special account. Yes, it's very true that I do not get adverts on my Instagram app. I never have. Um, well, what about on this one, by the way? Have you have you got them on this one? Yeah, yeah. If I log onto that app, that account on my Instagram, do you get? Them? I see adverts and yeah. reels and and you know all of that kind of stuff. I wonder if that point that was made with because uh, I didn't, I don't know this about Instagram that they have so many. Oh, probably should know so many different kinds of accounts that you've sort of got lost in the valley of old in terms <laughs> of in terms of not having the adverts. Well, there you go. So Michael even says that my my um, where was it? He says that my. Um, my guess is that Kevin's account has gotten misplaced and forgotten. Okay. <laughs> so well, it's not been for, case, it's certainly not been forgotten. Case, then I wouldn't get any traction no, from it whatsoever. <laughs> no, but maybe in, in, in the way that it works under the bonnet is, or the hood is what he means by that, I suppose. But you've got plenty of traction, that's for sure. And you're using it for your business, aren't you? Yeah, um, and uh, and so can any, anybody else. Yeah. So, well, there are Kev... Um, I'm just uh, just re- two weeks of ranting at that. Re- reach <laughs> out, enough. reach out with your long leg there. Hold on, reach out, take a good kick. <laughs> there we go. You got my things. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go, indeed. Right.
Was no. that was that the extent of that question? <laughs> dare I dare I ask if there's any more? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. I've just got a couple of comment ones here. Um, this was from oh where was it? Oh yeah, here it is. Um, uh, Quinn White. Um, I was mentioning magnetic filters. Do you remember? Oh, it's probably a yeah. few, good few weeks ago now. And he said he uses the Case system, K A A S E system, and they're amazing. Mm. They come in great sizes and are fast. And so far as I can tell, very nice. Since I got mine, they even came out with a set that has colour-coded knurled grips so that uh, you can quickly tell your 3 from your 6 from your 10 stop. That's a good idea. The one thing to note is the CPL is also a magnet. And while it's easy enough to spin, it's not as smooth as on a filter that screws on. That's sure. Uh, that, that's true. Um, but thank you, um, Quinn, for that. Um, okay. Yeah, I've never heard of that system. Sounds yeah, good. Yeah. Um, Very good. I will go... link to it in the show notes that nobody looks at. <laughs> no, you say that. Are you sure? Yeah. Um, you should, by the way, uh, you can yeah. somehow, I think, include links in the show notes that come up on, because I see it in other podcasts, mm. actually, links, links, you know, proper yeah. clickable links. Yeah. That come up in the podcast feed. I don't know if we should start doing that. Yeah, maybe. maybe we'll do that instead. See it. Yeah. Well, as well. I yeah, I was going to say because you really want to drive it through the website. That's the point of it, isn't it? That's yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you, so, because you, because I don't use Spotify anymore, I can't. Listen, I don't listen to mm. my podcasts on Spotify. So I listen to them on uh, Google Podcast Player, and yeah. I notice that you can just click on a link in the in the podcast description. They link to whatever they've talked about, yeah. and it just opens up on your phone. So that might be helpful to people. I yeah. think. We'll do it. We'll do it as a trial. Both. We'll do both. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Adam B. I think we've had this question before. Oh, is it about Instagram? Because if it is, I'm gonna go home. Yeah. How comes <laughs> Kev gets so? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, we mentioned lens hoods on lenses, and I think we established that. No, I think we've had this question. I didn't press my delete button, did I? Um, and then there was uh, the the consideration for releasing a photography book of your wedding work over the years. We definitely have had that, haven't we? Yes. Because yeah. I, I think um, we had the conversation where you said you didn't feel that um, that photography books, um, in in terms of um, ones that, that teach, um, are quite as. Did you say relevant? Would you have said relevant? Uh, not so much relevant, but I, you know, I just I've been in that mix. You know, I've written a book before, and then there was kind of new books on the lineup, and they, and they basically just said, "No, people, people yeah. typically use YouTube and online stuff." Yeah, so, okay. um, that, that, yeah, they still make some books, but yes, some people like books. I like books. I, I like, like books. I like physical books as well. Would you? Would you? Um, if if you could go to your bookshelf and and learn about a camera, or go to YouTube, what would you choose? Uh, YouTube, firstly. Why? Yeah. Because it's updated it's because it's, more frequently. It's immediate. Yeah, you can you can look at it in terms of recent. Uh, you can look at it in terms of interactions. How many people you know have watched it, and yeah. you know is it is it a good video? That yeah, that. Whereas a book, you know, you yeah, you'd have to go to the bookstore, look at the reviews on Amazon or whatever, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, yes, I would. Yeah, basically, YouTube right. first. I, first found, I found your original X one hundred book the other day, Kev. Mm. I was yeah. uh, trying to catalogue my books a bit better, and I found it. X1, it's the full title of that book, by the way, is X100S, From Snapshots to Great Shots That's by it. an Instagram Cheat. <laughs> Do you think the book was more successful because you had a following? Uh, yeah, almost <laughs> definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Almost definitely. Yeah. Paul Cloedon. Uh, hi, guys. I hope you and families are doing well. I don't know. I mean, our families, my family's doing okay. They're, they're in the middle of mocks at the moment. Is your, is your Rosa in mocks at the moment? I don't know. She might be. Well, she's, one of them is. No, the she's year 10. Right. Uh, What's I don't that? know. What's Jack? Year 10? Yeah. Uh, yeah, must be then. No, I don't think she's doing them. I don't know. I, is, it, is, it, right. is it the mock before the mock? I don't know. I, I, all I know is when, when he when he asks me to test him, I don't understand at all what what I'm reading. I think in our school they do the mocks before Christmas, do they? if I remember ah, rightly. Right. Yeah, oh, maybe there's more have. mocks to come. Poor old bugger. Maybe. He's got more of this to come. Well, that's mm. going on. Sam's all right. She's um, she's uh, her. She's taken her. Oh, this is very rude, so I won't say that. I was going to say she's taken her ragtag football team that she was training and she's yeah. made them into super, super, superstars. And they are Ooh. today, as we record this, they're going to uh, to Slough um, to go and... I have to say it in that way, in that affected manner. 
um, <laughs> they're going to Slough, lovely Slough, um, to, uh, they're in the semi-finals. They're in the semi-finals, Kev. They, everybody wrote them off at the start of the year. So that, that's, that's, not, yeah. that's not a sports team, not even an, it's not even an academy. Ooh, they, everybody put their noses up. But um, Sam, Sam has worked really hard with them. And we're in the semis, Kev. Semis. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. Good for them. Excellent. So that's what she's doing. What about your Gemma? I hope she's noticed, by the way. I'm not saying book of face anymore. <laughs> yeah, she probably has. Um, yeah, yeah, she's fine. She's in work today. Um, beat to the stables this morning. Uh, I'll be... Uh, it's Wednesday, isn't it? So yeah. I, 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 I get my um, Van Trop van out tonight and I take... I'll be his friend, Rosa, her friend. We all trot off to judo. And I, <laughs> I, I, I wander into the dojo singing, the hills are alive with yeah. the sound of music. Right. And, then, uh, and then we'll do judo and then we'll come home. And the fact that I have to take all the kids on Wednesday is, is, is annoying to me because we used to, I used to go to the pub with the judo boys after, well, I'm coming oh. after uh, judo on Wednesdays, but now I can't because I've got 100 kids in the back seat. We've so, had a lot yeah, of rugby with, late, though, Kev, to celebrate with your... Um in the, boo- in the <laughs> yeah, boozer not, well not necessarily uh, celebrate actually it's probably not the right word is it i don't i don't think either of us should be talking no, about the rugby no, although no, i would no. say actually uh you know if you're irish and you're listening well done because they were bloody good this six nations amazing deserved everything they got all the good stuff that went their way our jack reminded me he said uh he said remember dad you're half irish you found out recently didn't you so you uh, yeah. have, have got a no lose match on um, yeah. So I'm going to have to make a special jersey that's green on one side and white on the other. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm I'm I've got a lot of Irish in me as well from both sides of my family. Yeah. So yes, there we go. <laughs> right. Anyway, he said after spending the last year shooting predominantly at cross JPEGs on my X100V, I've just noticed something. I might be a bit slow. I'll fess up. He says. When I develop the image in Lightroom Classic, the default treatment and profile in the basic panel is color. It's a shame they can't spell. No, colour. <laughs> Paul, colour, C-O-L-O-R. I, I would imagine more countries spell it that way than our way. Wouldn't you think now, Kev? More people. Maybe not no more, uh, Maybe not more countries, more, but more people would see it as a C-O-L-O-R, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, I would thought so. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not black and white monochrome. There does seem to be a, a subtle difference between the two. There is a major difference, though, if you move the temperature or tint slider. I am mm. just wondering what implications there may be for editing and printing in either of these two profiles. For example, if I edit in the colour profile, then export for printing, is there a greater likelihood of a colour cast in the print? Yeah, well, not not really a greater um, likelihood unless you've changed any of the colour channels. Mm. But he's right in that. And when you bring in a JPEG, a black and white JPEG in the in Lightroom under the profiles, you've got monochrome or colour, it will say colour. And the reason for that is because... you it's not Lightroom that's that's making any kind of adjustment at that point. It just sees it as a JPEG right. and it has a built-in profile. So, yes, you can, as I said, I think, I don't know if we talked about this at the top of this show, it was the last time show, um, but one of the things I do is I use a colour profile and then and then desaturate it, right? turn right. it to monochrome. So, yeah, you can, you can make slight minor adjustments or major adjustments, if you so wish, to taste um, doing it that way. Yeah, mm. quite right. I didn't, I didn't realise in North Adelaide, in Australia... You've been to Australia, Kev, ever? No, never. Oh, right. Too scary. <laughs> it's full of people saying, it's all right for you. You, yeah. you, had, a, you had an Instagram already, so you've made it into an even bigger Instagram because you yeah, don't have to do any work yeah. for it. Those big hairy spiders aren't going to come near me. They're going to come up, they're going to try and bite me, and then they're going to go, go near me. I wouldn't. I, do, I tell you what, if, you, if he needs in his life. <laughs> if you went on your Instagram the, uh, uh, rant, they wouldn't come anywhere near you, Kev. They wouldn't dare. Yeah, yeah that's right. You could, They'd go off you could your knobbly knees to bite. Wrestle with crocodiles, you could. I'm just, I'm just putting together an expedition um, in terms of crocodiles. Sorry, just a slight diversion um, at the moment for January 2024. And uh, we sorted out where, where we're going. And uh, one of the places is to uh, caress crocodiles. Mm. Have, have you ever heard of such a thing? It's uh, it sounds a bit touristy, but it's not. It's something that's uh, it's an uh, an age old uh, West African thing where where people swim in the waters with a crocodile, believing that the these particular crocodiles, which are sort of covered in some kind of green paste, will make you more fertile. I, okay. <laughs> I wonder how many people you're going to get on that workshop. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's full up actually. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't tell him about the crocodile bit just yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, in in 
I didn't realise in Australia they spell colour with the U. I thought that uh, they they were using the other the other spelling pool, but clearly not. Right, Facebook, Kev, go on. Uh, quick one from Rick Nelson. He says, "Is the XT3 a good solid purchase in 2023?" Mm. Well, yes, I would imagine it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah, of course. If you um, if it does what you need it to do. Then absolutely, don't go spending extra money on an XT5, XT4 if you don't need the differences between an XT3 and an XT4 and an XT5. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. same same still goes for XT1. Uh, if it works for you, then yes, absolutely. What about X Pro, Kev? Is that still a yeah. good purchase? A good, and there is yeah, a, there's a it. there's a loaded question that I'm asking you here. Yeah, if you want it, if you you know if you. Uh, if you don't need all the bells and whistles that are the, the latest X Pro uses, then yeah, go for an X Pro One or whatever. Mm. Actually, X Pro One is quite expensive to buy secondhand, so maybe an X Pro Two. Is an X Pro One quite expensive now? Yeah, they they're going up put it oh. that way because they're 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 harder to find now, and they are you know they're seen as a bit of a classic. I love so, mine. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, well, I say I wouldn't get rid of it. How much care have they gone up to? <laughs> Yeah. Well, X X one hundred Vs are ridiculous. It was somebody in America bought one for fourteen thousand dollars. You're pulling the leg? No. Yep. Really? Yep. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I think it was on Petapixel. I saw that, but yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's supply and demand, though, isn't it? You know. Well, I know uh, it's supply and demand, but but fourteen thousand mm, dollars. It can't be that difficult to find one in the world. Hipsters. Hipsters. That's all I need to say. Hipsters. Tickety talkers, Kev. Tickety talkers. Yeah. Well, all uh, of the talkers are going to be <laughs> going to have to find something else soon, aren't they? Because uh, I reckon it's going to be closed down. Well, certainly when um, government departments start banning people from using them, then it's mm-hmm. kind of a, it feels like a slippery slope, Kev. Mind you, saying that I used my Huawei Wee Wee watch and my Huawei, I still got my watch, Huawei Wee Wee watch, and my I did have a Huawei Wee phone, and they were banned, weren't they? And I love oh, those. Was your so, Huawei Wee Wee watch the one that went off in the church? Yes. See, yes. if you'd have had an Apple one, it would have thought I'm 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 in compassionate mode. I won't be going off yeah. today. Yeah, I, I won't be doing this. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe i do need to look at the connections that's <laughs> probably yeah i'd say you do my my the, the reason why, why i was uh talking uh about the uh the x pro is matthew kafferke wrote in um hi kev hi neil first of all thanks for your podcast i've uh, had questions answered and discovered photographers i would have known nothing about if it wasn't for you uh, and you encourage me to switch to fujifilm from nikon 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 how, how do we say how do we say Nikon? Nikon. There we go. But he has a, a question which leads on to other questions. So this could be the last one of the, the show, unless we have another one about Instagram. Um, to start with, are you aware of any build quality issues with the X Pro 3? In the past six weeks, I've had to send mine back for the joystick to be replaced. It was sticking. And now within a few weeks of getting the camera back, the sub-monitors just failed. I'm lucky the camera's uh, still within the warranty period. Have you had any problems with this, basically? Well, no, this is interesting, isn't it? Because do you remember a couple of months ago, we had an, e- an email in from somebody who said that they sent their X-Pro3 back mm. because they'd read online that the sub-monitor failed. And so his actually hadn't failed, but he sent it back because he was nervous that it might happen. And I had another one of my mini rants saying, you know, why would you send it back if it hadn't happened to you? But the sub-monitor thing, definitely some people seem to be unlucky with it by the sounds of it. Um, because that's twice it's come up now, um, and I've never, I, I've never had a sub monitor fail. I've got two X Pro threes, and one of them specifically has been used, you know, a lot, um, and so no issues for me. But yeah, I mean, you, if, if we go back to that conversation we had then, where um, you know, if you type into uh, into the internet. X Pro 3 sub monitor failures. You mm. will find all the people who post about their, their sub monitors failing. Yeah. But obviously, what you won't see is all the people who don't post to say, nope, never happened to me, no. which I would say is probably the vast majority. Um, but yes, I mean, it seems to me a little bit of, of bad luck. You know, I love my X Pro 3. No problem with the sub monitor. I don't actually, I don't like the sub monitor, <laughs> but yeah. it hasn't failed. Well, that was um, that was his next question to, to find out if your sub monitor had had failed and obviously it's not the joystick failing said didn't bother me but the sub monitor failing did the joystick failing would drive me nuts i had one that pinged off from the canon r6 that i had it just i was using it i wasn't i mean i'm not particularly hard with the cameras i look after my cameras 
but I was just using it and I was moving the focus point around and ping, it went firing across the church. Mm. Never found yeah. it. Never found it. So that drove me bonkers because you actually use that a lot more than you think. Yeah, absolutely. Once you get used to using a joystick, you're going to use it a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, no no issues of mine. I, I honestly, and I would say this genuinely, um, I've never had to send any of my cameras in for uh, repair or sensors or anything like that. And I'm thinking back all through the years now whether I'm actually telling the truth or not, but I'm, I'm 100% sure I've you, you not done You ha- probably have had to send one in when, uh, when, when it's fallen to the floor or something, haven't you? Have you never had a breakage at all? No, no, I haven't. No. Oh. Um, I haven't, and I, I still have, you know, like they still all work as well. They're all in my cupboard, all the ones I've kept at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, from the original X100, the X Pro One, all that. Yeah, no, no dramas whatsoever. I think I've actually, I think I've only ever had one that I've needed to send in, and uh, it was, it was back within a sterling amount of time, um, which was the XT3, and that, that was purely because I, I was, I was at the, uh, where was I, the Brighton Marathon. I was making some pictures of the Brighton Marathon and I put, I put the camera, just put the camera down just for a second to look in my camera bag for something, can't remember what. And somebody leapt over me to try and run in front of the runners before they got, got to him. And his foot got caught in the strap and he pinged the camera up and bang, there it landed on its backside in front of all the runners about to run over it. Yeah, yeah, I remember when that happened. Thank yeah. you very yeah. much. I, I never, when I used to shoot um, Canon as well, I never had to send any of those in. I used to send them in regularly for regular drinks reception. I used to send them in regularly for servicing because yeah. uh, it was part of the CPS thing. But but yeah, no no issues with them either. Um, yeah, just, uh, just I'm I'm going to have to think about what we're going to title this program as. I I think Kev gets angry about Instagram. Could well be the. I'm not angry about Instagram. No, are you not? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Kev gets yeah. angry about people saying that he has um, he he has some sort of opportunity that other people don't. That's not very catchy, is it? <laughs> I'm gonna have to think about this. No. Anyway, uh, and for those of you that are patrons, remember that immediately after this show, you will be able to listen to a patron pop up. And this week, we are going to be looking at a photograph taken by Craig Smith. Craig Smith, good. All right. That's it for another couple of weeks. Um, get your Instagram letters in in the meantime, and uh, we'll speak to you. We'll speak to you very soon. Bye, Ken. Bye. The Fuji Cast is an independent loading zone production. Email the show with your questions and words of wisdom to click at fujicast.co.uk. Email any complaints and political nonsense to our wives, who will deal with your comments in their own good time and in their own good way.